At the time of Alexander's invasion, in the spring of 334 BC, Darius III is the king of Persia. Darius III was a successful and experienced commander, a skillful and shrewd politician. He's restored stability in the Persian Empire. He's deeply respected. When Alexander arrives in Asia, Darius is well over a 1,000 miles away, on the other side of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Philip had been alarming for the Persians. Alexander, not so much. He's a 22-year-old kid. Alexander has invaded with a few tens of thousands of troops. Darius says, I'm going to let my governors in Asia Minor take care of this. The local governors collect together their forces and face Alexander at a place called the Granicus River. And they have every confidence that they are going to wipe the Macedonian army off the map. Alexander brings 32,000 men to the banks of the river Granicus. The Persian governors have around 10,000 more. So, they will be upon us as soon as we cross the river. Alexander was a, a man who had a mission, um, and he knew that mission entailed risk. Ready the troops. Be quick. Parmenion, the leading general of Alexander, advises him not to do it, that it's late in the day, the army is weary, the Persians may have an unusual advantage with the defensive position. But Alexander knows that he has to join battle for a number of reasons. The first one is psychological. What would it look like if the first time we engaged with the enemy, we withdrew, we ran away? The second pressing reason is logistical. If Alexander does not fight and win a victory early on, he is going to be shut out of the cities that he needs to provide supplies. He's commanding the most powerful force ever assembled from the Greek city-states. He's got them unified under his command. And he knows that he has to produce results. Fording a river and then engaging the enemy with some of your force still left is a very difficult military problem. And tactically, most people don't want to do it. Alexander understands the Persian mentality. He understands why the Persians have set up the battlefield the way that they have. The Persians think they are dealing with an older version of the Greek army, who would be heavily armored, who would be weighed down. Alexander's forces are lighter, meaning the river isn't the obstacle that the Persians think it is. Emerging into the shallows, Alexander's men face their enemy at close range. Trying to ford a river, people are shooting things at them. They are exposed. So this is a very terrifying moment. From the eastern bank of the Granicus, Alexander releases his most potent force. Alexander has the phalanxes that his father had created, this incredibly uh, hardened and experienced battle force that is at his disposal. I don't believe the Persians have any idea of what they face. They have 
now run into a force that has innovated in ways they have not seen. Plutarch talks about this as frenzy. The clash, the close order nature of it. The idea that every killing blow is a personal one. To look someone in the eyes as that happened. And Alexander finds himself involved in a cavalry melee, spears and swords going in every direction. The Persians know if they kill Alexander, the Greek army will collapse. This is what warfare is. It is kill or be killed. Alexander is knocked to the ground from his horse. He receives a blow to the head that takes off one of the plumes on his helmet. If Alexander is killed here, the war is over. The League of Corinth breaks up. The future of Macedon is at stake. He's saved by the speed of the sword arm of Clytus the Black. Had he been a few seconds later, fractions of a second, then Alexander might have been killed or crippled. That encounter wins the first stage of the battle. The Persian cavalry is routed, the Persian infantry are abandoned by their leaders. Once the Persian commanders have scattered, the rest of the Persian lines flee. <laughs> Alexander has won an incredible battle against the odds, and Alexander's decision to fight this battle has paid off. The Battle of the Granicus shows us Alexander's qualities as a leader in many ways. He builds his confidence. He becomes more and more assured. His troops become more loyal. They strengthen. Everything follows in cementing his purpose and mission. Alexander's victory sends a very strong message to the rest of the Persians. They may think this is a young general, an upstart, a child, a boy. He's a force to be reckoned with. Alexander! Alexander! 